much for joining us, folks. I want to finish up talking about FMS, fructose malabsorption syndrome, and its connection to non-digestive health issues. This is so, so, so important because if you are one of the many Americans who are dealing with this health challenge, 100 million Americans at last count, one out of three Americans is dealing with fructose malabsorption syndrome. If you're one of those Americans, it can potentially have an effect on every single body system. This is so important to recognize. If you're getting your information from mainstream sources, you are probably unaware of this idea of the relationship between digestive health issues and non-digestive health issues. Yesterday I saw an article in the CT Post, which is a daily newspaper out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. The headline was, Kids Get Schooled at McDonald's. The article is about all the wonderful work of the McDonald's Corporation in educating children on the importance of eating lots of McDonald's Happy Meals and French fries and hamburgers to help reverse the American epidemic of obesity. I wish I was kidding you folks. I wish this was a joke. But unfortunately, as we learn from the wise words of this 11-year-old who's quoted as saying, quote, I learned that McDonald's can be very healthy for you if you make the right choices. I usually have lots of cheese, but I had less cheese and more lettuce, and I had chicken instead of hamburger because it has fewer calories. This is the kind of stuff that our kids are learning. Chicken, presumably chicken McNuggets instead of hamburger, and this is what McDonald's teaches their kids. Uh, our kids uh, is healthy food. This is not a joke, folks. And this poor 11-year-old, if she's not somehow disabused of the idea that there is anything healthy about McDonald's, the air at McDonald's is not healthy. If she is not somehow told that this stuff is not healthy food, this poor 11-year-old kid is poised to join the hundreds of millions of Americans who are confronting some kind of health challenge and interacting with a medical model that has set the bar on biochemical ignorance and biochemical stupidity. This is what our kids are doomed to. Being surrounded with this kind of misinformation is really what an info war is all about. If we're truly going to be info warriors, we must learn how to do research on our own and to most certainly not trust anyone to do our work for us when it comes to our health and the health of our loved ones. In terms of fructose malabsorption syndrome, we're really talking about fructose, fruit sugar, which most people will tell you is benign and gentle and good for you. So many people think it's important to eat a lot of fruit. Fructose malabsorption syndrome is about fruit sugar, fructose sitting in the small intestine, not being absorbed, and then feeding bacteria. From there, you get bacterial overgrowth, and this can be the cause of tremendous digestive distress, diarrhea, gas, bloating, cramping. These are all common in fructose malabsorption syndrome. And then bacteria that are overgrowing release gases, and this can slow down the digestive tract. Methane gas in particular has a, slow, a slowing down effect on the digestive tract, and now you end up with constipation. And then these outgassings can be especially problematic if you're dealing with other digestive problems, and especially if you're drinking a lot of alcohol. If you're an alcoholic or even if you're just drinking occasionally and you're dealing with fructose malabsorption and excess bacteria, bacterial overgrowth in the intestine, this can cause significant liver damage and lead to significant intestinal permeability, intestinal leakage issues. And this whole subject of intestinal permeability and intestinal leakage is something you don't hear a lot about, except uh, unless you're listening to programs like this. But intestinal permeability is a very significant cause of autoimmune diseases. And I'm talking Sjogren's syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, psoriasis, vitiligo. All of these autoimmune diseases that doctors just throw their hands up and say, we don't know what the heck is going on, can be backtracked many times to intestinal permeability issues. And this, can, in turn, can be secondary to fructose malabsorption. If you've been listening to the bright side and you've been wondering why we're always talking about digestion as a major cause of disease and a major cause of autoimmunity, this is the mechanism. And this is why I am so, so adamant about dealing with digestive issues if you are dealing with any autoimmune health issue. If your doctor has told you what you're dealing with is autoimmunity, backtrack it to the digestive system. This is so, so important. Number one, because it's counterintuitive. It's not something that everybody, everybody's going to automatically think of or automatically understand. And number two, because it flies in the face of the typical way we treat autoimmune diseases. 
The typical way we treat autoimmune diseases is to shut down the immune system. Autoimmunity, which as the name implies, is the body's immune system attacking itself in a friendly fire kind of way, comes in a hundred different flavors. There's all kinds of different autoimmune diseases. That they affect a hundred million people, nearly a hundred million people in this country alone. And it's a source of tremendous frustration for many well-meaning, if biochemically ignorant, healthcare professionals. And the reason that these types of illnesses, whether we're talking about multiple sclerosis or psoriasis or rheumatoid arthritis or Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease or Sjogren's disease or type 1 diabetes, the reason that these type of illnesses confuse so many people is because the causes are being mixed up with the effects. The effects are the organ systems that are breaking down. The effects are the thyroid, if you have Graves' disease, or the nerves, if you have multiple sclerosis, or the pancreas, if you have type 1 diabetes. These are the effects. These are what you see. But the pancreas, the nerves, the thyroid, that's not where you're going to find the cause of the disease. If you go to the doctor with Graves' disease, he's going to treat your thyroid. If you go uh, to the doctor with multiple sclerosis, he's going to treat your nerves. If you go to the doctor with type 1 diabetes, he's going to treat your pancreas. But this is not where the disease begins. This is the effect of the disease. It's not the cause of the disease. An autoimmune disease is not a disease of the thyroid or the nerves or the pancreas. It is a disease of the immune system. And the immune system is concentrated to a large extent in the digestive system. And it's super concentrated in the intestines. All right, I'll continue this talk on fructose smell absorption syndrome. I'm going to tell you about the amino acids you need to know about if you're dealing with FMS or intestinal permeability or really any digestive issue. We'll continue when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. Our number is 866-582-9933. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back. All right, continuing on with fructose malabsorption and the digestive issues that are associated with autoimmunity. If you have any autoimmune diseases, job number one is to focus on the digestive system. Anything that throws off the health of the intestine, especially the intestine, is likely to result in a breakdown of the immune system. This can cause a suppression of immune health. It can predispose you to constant colds and flus. And this is so important as we head into flu vaccine season. Uh, we're once again set up to be inundated with drugstore propaganda and flu vaccine manufacturer propaganda telling us to make sure we get the flu vaccine. How many of you caught the latest commercial for the flu shot with a cute little cartoon porcupine with the big eyes telling you about the new flu vaccine or flu shot that's got the tiny little needle to make sure you get your flu vaccine without being intimidated by the needle, I suppose. Alternatively, digestive slash immune system breakdown can hypersensitize, can make your immune system more sensitive, and the net result can be autoimmunity. And one of the most common effects of digestive slash immune system breakdown is a skin health issues, including sensitive skin, eczema, psoriasis, or chronic itching and rashes. Yesterday, we touched on the relationship of the female hormone system to gut bacteria, bacteria that live in the gut and bacterial overgrowth issues, which, of course, can result from fructose malabsorption. One of the most important roles for the bacteria that live in the gut, so-called gut flora, is the processing of estrogen. If you have any digestive issues that throw off your gut flora, you are now at risk for estrogenic disease, which includes cancers of the of reproductive system, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, fibroids, cysts, infertility and libido issues. All of these are estrogenic issues and they can be secondary, results from problems with the digestive system and gut bacteria. And once again, if you go to a doctor, you're probably going to end up addressing the most obvious manifestations of your health challenge, be it a treatment for your, of your ovaries or your uterus, and nobody's going to think of probiotics, nobody's going to think of chest checking for intestinal permeability or intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And as bad as all of this gets, it gets even worse. If you're dealing with fructose malabsorption or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you are running a high risk for malabsorption of what I consider to be the most, or at least one of the most, important amino acids, and that is tryptophan. 
And this can have enormous health ramifications above and beyond bacterial infections or bacterial issues and immunity because tryptophan is a critical, critical amino acid that has all kinds of important roles to play in the body. Of the 20 amino acids, 20 or so amino acids in the body, none is more functional, none is more versatile than tryptophan. This decrease in the availability of this very important amino acid, it's one of the branched chain amino acids, the stabilizing, grounding, building, relaxing amino acids. The decrease in the availability of tryptophan can have wide-ranging effects on every single system of the body. We talked about how tryptophan and really all of the branched chain amino acids suppress the appetite. So if you've got fructose malabsorption syndrome, you're more than likely going to end up eating a lot more food. And more than likely, if you're like most folks and you're subsisting on the standard American diet, you're going to be eating a lot more fructose, which of course is going to make matters worse. Tryptophan has important relaxing and mood stabilizing properties. So if you have fructose malabsorption syndrome, you're probably going to be more anxious. You're probably going to be more jittery. You're probably going to be more moody and depressed. You're very likely going to have problems sleeping. And if you're one of the poor folks who's got fibromyalgia, you should know that fibromyalgia has been shown to be associated with low levels of tryptophan. In a 1992 control study that was published in the Journal of Rheumatology, it was shown that fibromyalgia patients had lower tryptophan levels than healthy patients. In a second study, this one from the International Journal of Medical Research, it was shown that supplementation with tryptophan, actually with tryptophan's derivative, 5-HTP, supplementation caused significant, there's a quote, significant improvement in fibromyalgia symptoms, unquote, all of this leads one to believe that if you're dealing with FMS and fibromyalgia, there is a good possibility that you have some kind of impairment of your ability to absorb tryptophan and more than likely the other branch chain amino acids, and this can have serious ramifications. Last week we talked about Prozac and tryptophan. In many ways, tryptophan is nature's Prozac. Prozac, Effexor, Zoloft, these are all part of a class of drugs called serotonin uptake rehibitors reuptake inhibitors, SRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. And all of these drugs keep serotonin active in the brain. Well, because tryptophan is turned into serotonin, this amino acid tryptophan can, in effect, have the same effect as the SSRIs without toxicity, without side effects. And tryptophan deficiency can also result in brain issues like depression or anxiety that a well-meaning doctor is probably going to give you an SSRI for. So you may just have tryptophan deficiency, you may just have fructose malabsorption, you may just have intestinal permeability issues. You go to your uh, doctor, your psychiatrist, tell him you're depressed or you're an insomniac, you're going to end up with Prozac or Zoloft or Effexor. And remember, this deficiency in tryptophan, if you have FMS, is super easy to treat Stop eating the fructose. And considering that one out of three Americans is dealing with FMS, there is a really, really good chance that at least one out of three patients who's using these awful SSRI drugs can get themselves off of them simply by paying attention to fructose malabsorption issues, paying attention to digestive symptoms. And if you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with anxiety, jitteriness, insomnia, bipolar disorder, any mood issues, and you're thinking about fructose, or you're thinking about getting on uh, SSRI, please at least notice what happens to your digestive system when you, when you ingest fruit sugar or fructose, or just check and focus on digestive health in general. And as far as 5-HTP goes, 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is the derivative of tryptophan, there's some really important advantages that this stuff has, even over supplemental tryptophan. 5-HTP is a version of tryptophan that is quicker acting when it comes to brain health issues. 5-HTP is made in the body from tryptophan, and when tryptophan is unavailable, uh, uh, when tryptophan became unavailable a couple of years ago, when Prozac first came out, we talk, talked about this story last week, Prozac came out and tryptophan became unavailable for 10 or 12 years. 5-HTP was actually manufactured as a replacement for tryptophan, and the benefits of 5-HTP are pretty substantial, and they're all related to the brain chemical that comes from 5-HTP, the famous nerve transmitter, 
serotonin. All right, tomorrow I'm going to tell you about 5-HTP and what you can do in terms of taking care of your appetite issues and weight loss issues when it comes to using this very important supplement. We'll talk about it tomorrow. On the bright side, when we come back, we're going to take your phone calls. 866-582-9933 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, our number today, 866-582-9933. Time to take our first phone call. Let us go to Texas. Say hi to Ron. What's going on, buddy? Hello, Ben. Hey, Ron. Uh, this is Ron. Um, I've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Let me give you a little background. About a, uh, about a year ago, I got a septic infection with blood poisoning, and I was on a IV drip for three days with vancomycin and ciparol and some Oh, more high-powered antibiotics. Okay. And uh, then I was just diagnosed last week with RA. Of course, I refused the treatment, uh, that stuff that eats your stomach up. Uh, I think it's called um, Echo. Uh, I, I, he told me. And, and, and Silverex and stuff like that and anti Steroids. Right. I, yeah, I just I refused treatment, and he just kind of shuffled me out the office. Well, let's help you with your rheumatoid arthritis, okay, Ron? By the way, if you ever need a part-time job, Larry the Cable Guy is looking for a, a substitute. You might, you might fit right in there, buddy. I'm just kidding you, Ron. That was a joke. Ron, you got you? You're a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> yeah, all, right. Um, all right, rheumatoid arthritis is super easy, not just for you, buddy, but for anybody who's dealing with rheumatoid. It's an autoimmune disease. In other words, the body's attacking itself. As we said earlier today, and as I say almost every day, autoimmunity is when the body turns its immune system power, its immune system firepower on itself, on the body itself. Friendly fire is what you can think of it as. If the immune system turns its... its uh, its uh, uh, armaments, its weapons on the nerve system, on the nerve, on the nerve insulation, the nerve cell covering, we'll call it m- uh, multiple sclerosis. If it turns its friendly fire on the pancreas, we'll call it type 1 diabetes. If it turns its, its, uh, its weaponry on the thyroid, we'll call it Hashimoto's thyroid or Graves' disease. If it turns its weaponry on the joints, we call it rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is the body's immune system attacking the joints itself. Question then becomes, what's going on? Why is the body attacking itself? Why is the body turning its immune system firepower on the joints? Well, usually what you'll find is a breakdown somehow in the main, uh, the, the heart, the concentration, the main concentration of the immune system, which is the digestive tract. It is almost impossible, and I'll probably tell you it's impossible, to have an autoimmune disease without having some kind of digestive system breakdown. This is where you need to focus if you're dealing with rheumatoid, Ron, or anybody else who's dealing with rheumatoid arthritis. Focus on the digestive system. And there's several ways you can do this. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to eliminate problem foods. And that means foods that trigger heartburn, foods that, foods that trigger gas, Foods that trigger bloating or cramping, foods that cause constipation, foods that cause watery stools or loose stools, foods that cause uh, diarrhea, foods that cause digestive distress of any kind have to be eliminated. That is job number one if you have rheumatoid arthritis, if you have psoriasis, if you have Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Sjogren's syndrome, whatever your flavor of autoimmune disease is. Job number one is digestive wellness, eliminating digestive triggers. Now, don't try to use your memory. Don't try to remember what caused your problems in the past. Every time you eat a food, write down what you ate, and then next to, uh, get yourself a notebook and write down what you ate, and next to where you write it down, write down your digestive, how you feel in, in a digestive sense a couple hours later, if you have gas, if you have bloating, if you have diarrhea, whatever it is, write it down. And then after a couple of weeks, notice what you what you came up with. Well, gosh, every time I have corn, this happens. Every time I have bread, this happens. Every time I have cereal, I get loose stools. Every time I have milk, I have gas. Every time I have uh, a cheese, I have constipation. Whatever it is, uh, which find out what uh, what you fe- uh, notice what you connected. Notice the dots that you've connected between your foods you ate and your digestive symptoms, and then no- those are foods that need to be eliminated. Your most likely suspects, but this is no means a comprehensive list, it could really be anything, but your most likely suspects are going to be grains of all kinds, not just gluten. Don't even think about gluten. 
Grains of all kinds can be problematic aside from the gluten, and that means wheat and barley and rye and oats and uh, a millet and uh, spelt, really anything, buckwheat, any kind of grain is a potential food intolerance. So eliminating grains, uh, potential, potentially eliminating grains, eggs, dairy, soy, and all legumes, these are your most likely suspects and these are foods that need to be eliminated. And by the way, when it comes to soy, soy is in almost all processed foods. So you've got to be very, very vigilant connecting the foods you're eating to your digestive symptoms. By the way, Ron, that move alone can have a tremendous effect on improving the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis or any autoimmune disease. The second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use supplements that help improve digestive wellness, that build the digestive lining, that improve leaky gut, uh, any issues you have with leaky gut syndrome. That means glutamine powder. I've been doing five grams a day of the powder, a teaspoon a day of glutamine powder. Uh, the mineral zinc is very important for the digestive tract, maybe 50 milligrams of zinc per colonate a day. In fact, everybody should be on 50 milligrams of zinc per colonate a day. Essential fatty acids can be very helpful, especially omega-3 essential fatty acids, which come from fish or from flaxseed. Get yourself on the ultimate EFAs. It's a wonderful source of essential fatty acids. Don't forget about fermented food and probiotics. We got a letter yesterday, by the way, from somebody who said that I should be talking about fermented foods in addition to probiotic supplements, and they're absolutely 100% correct. I do neglect sometimes to talk about fermented foods, but they're very important. Cabbage in particular, uh, not, even, not even fermented cabbage, although that's great, but any kind of cabbage. Cabbage soup is great for the digestive system. Uh, uh, but fermented cabbage, sauerkraut, is wonderful for digestive health. Get yourself on sauerkraut, get yourself on kefir, get yourself on borscht, get yourself on natto or miso or tempeh. Make sure you're taking a good probiotic supplement. I found out yesterday, by the way, that the R Garden probiotics are no longer available, unfortunately, from Longevity. So if you're using Longevity products, use the Flora FX. Get as much probiotic and fermented food as you can in your digestive tract. You're focusing on digestive wellness. And then last but not least, there's wonderful supplements that you can take that are directly important for the joints. Anything with gelatin is going to be very helpful. Get yourself on the glucogel caps. Gelatin, by the way, is also good for your digestive system, in addition to being great for helping rebuild joints. Get on the glucogel caps. Get on the digestive enzymes. Not only are the digestive enzymes important for digestion, but they're great for any kind of joint inflammation. They're great for any inflammation. If you're dealing with uh, regular arthritis, osteoarthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis, the ultimate enzymes can have multiple benefits, not just for your digestion, but also as an anti-inflammatory. You're going to want to take your uh, digestive enzymes on an empty stomach to take advantage of their anti-inflammatory uh, properties, and on a full stomach if you want to take advantage of uh, their digestive, uh, digestive support properties. There's also great anti-inflammatory nutrients, uh, including vitamin E, and vitamin C that you can use. Hang tight, Ron. We'll finish up when we uh, come back from our break. Drew, we'll get you next. Russ, Greg, Susan, hang tight. We'll try to get to all you guys today. 866 is our number. We're coming back on the break side after this. Don't go away. Hi, we're back on the break side. Talking to Ron in Texas. Hey, Ron. You there, buddy? Yeah, I'm still here. And what I want to tell you is that I had, after I got through taking all that vancomycin and cipriol on IV, I came down with C. diff. Uh, I like it's called, you call it bacterial over, uh, overgrowth. overgrowth. Yeah. I mean, I like surprised. feel them. Uh, I'm I mean, not surprised. I'm not surprised. That vancomycin, all those antibiotics, they throw, it, they throw off your intestinal bacteria. Uh, did you say, by the way, that you got the rheumatoid after you had all that stuff happen? Yeah, after I got off well, the, uh, the go, IV drips, I came yeah. down with C. diff. Well, no, the rheumatoid. The rheumatoid, did you, did you have it all your life, or did you have it after you had your... Uh, uh, I, I found out I, when I get up in the morning, I can't raise my arms up, and I yeah. can't close my hands, and then it takes about two hours to get to moving. Well, this isn't something you had all your life. This is just something that's come about recently, right? I had a bad acid antibiotics gave me the okay, C-diff. Yeah. So you want to, you got, you're dealing, my friend, with a digestive issue, okay? Yes. Yeah, so everything I just told you, and I know I did tell you a lot there, get, go to brightsideben.com 
You can go to the archive page. The archives are usually up within a few hours after the show, so later today, go check out the archive page and, and take notes okay. on everything I said. There's just tons of information. I want to give you as much as I can. I'm trying, trying not to overload you, but there's a lot of good stuff here. You're not going to overload me because I need to get over this. Right, what what about Tangy Tangerine? Well, I just on. ordered some of that. Hang on, buddy. Let me finish up here and I'll tell you about the Tangy Tangerine, okay? Tangy Tangerine is great stuff, by the way. Uh, you're going to need vitamin E, around 400 international units a day. You want to get some coenzyme Q10, uh, around 100 milligrams a day of coenzyme Q10. Make sure you're on the OsteoFX, which is magnesium. That's very important for the joints. You get a little calcium in there as well. Stay on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Just sip on it all day long. Very, very important, especially to wean you off of the problem foods. A lot of times we snack on foods that are problematic because we're not getting the micronutrients that we need. The BTT, the Beyond Tang Tangerine, can do that for you. So sip on the BTT all, all day long. I think I said zinc, but if I didn't, uh, 50 milligrams of zinc per colonnade a day are very important. The ultimate EFAs are very important as well. So there's tons of stuff for you there, my friend. Uh, as I say, get to, the re get to the replay page or the archive page at brightsideben.com and take notes. If you follow every single step that I told you, there's absolutely no way that you're not going to improve and you're not going to start to feel better. And pretty darn quickly, most folks, once they start a nutritional supplement program, will notice results within 24 to 48 hours. And thanks for your call, Ron. Appreciate it.